Welcome, you too, but maybe. We'll see how this goes. The Diablo 4 quarterly update just released for March 2022. I'm gonna not read everything unless I get inspired because there's a lot of words here, okay? <clears throat> there's a lot of words here, so I got chat with me. So that's cool. Hello and welcome to the first Diablo 4 quarterly update of 2022. We hope you enjoyed last year's quarterly update on systems, itemization, and visual effects. The blog and our previous updates are available if you missed out. All right. I'm struck by how much the game has evolved since our first blogs. It's difficult for these updates to showcase all the work our engineers have put in. Designers, artists, QA team, producers have done. How do you show a bug that doesn't happen anymore or explain the planning in a burn down chart resulted in a feature making it into the game instead of getting cut? I guess that's true. All the roadblocks, you know? All the roadblocks and everything like that. Well, you can't... Uh, you don't play Diablo? None of us play Diablo 4. This is not out yet. While you can't see these things, you can see how systems like itemization and skill trees have evolved incorporating your feedback and interest along the way you can see how much closer we're getting okay cool all right i'm already starting to skip now many artists need to work together that's true we all need to work together in life you know what i'm saying today we have artists for many of these layers okay we hope you enjoy this update and look forward to your thoughts joe shelley joe shelley all right. game director diablo 4. oh Damn. Joe Shilly? Oh, wow. Chris Ryder, art director, environments of D4. The team has been hard at work and we're excited to take you behind the scenes on how we've developed the environments for D4. You will hear from our associate art director, environments, Brian Fletcher. Okay. Skipping. While many of the locations we will be sharing in various states of progress, it's an excellent opportunity to showcase the amazing work our teams are creating for the next installment of Diablo. The environments of Diablo 4 cover a lot of territory and visual real estate of the game. True, true. Five distinct regions and hundreds of zones that mimic Lost Ark. What? Uh, this is where all the monster slaying, loot gathering, and exploration happens. Of course, none of this would be possible without the collective efforts of our talented designers. Got it. Damn, that looks good, man. It's real dark and beat down. They got wagon wheels, footprints on the road. You can hear the sound of the rain trickling, trickling down. I mean, that looks pretty good. All the little details. Okay. We approach creating the environments of Diablo 4 through a darker, more grounded interpretation than earlier installments. Darker the darkest game ever? You think it'll be more grittier than D1? I think D1 was the scariest, man. Maybe. Um, let's see. D1 felt like a game that you shouldn't even be playing, like a like a dark web kind of game. To me. The aim is for believability, not realism. Believability comes through our use of materials and deliberate construction of architecture and artifacts you will come across as you play through the dungeons and the open world. The colors are going to be trash, basically. Yeah, it's all going to be brown. <laughs> brown town, dude. In addition, the regional weather conditions are varied by local biomes in a sense of history set the foundation of how an object or place should look visually in a medieval world like Sanctuary. Okay, so like if it used to rain a lot in one area, there might be like, yeah, there might be signs of that or whatever. If there's tornadoes, tornado alley, I don't know. After all, Sanctuary is full of history, struggle, and conflict, giving us many opportunities to depict a diverse world full of compelling locations in a dark gothic medieval setting. This is my favorite setting, right? The Dark Souls. Yeah, no. Diablo setting in general. Even the wealthiest areas in Sanctuary are challenging to exist in. Leaning into these characteristics adds to the richness of the world. Okay, I'm gonna start skipping. Okay, here we go. When it rains, surfaces will get wet, puddles form in ruts, 
and hoof prints on the ground feels muddy. The atmosphere is heavy and damp. Contrast that by making your way into a hazy firelit tavern. Ooh. You can see the floorboards and stuff. It's cool, man. Uh, that instantly contrasts with the atmosphere outside. It's like in the Hateful Eight when you're when they're outside. You know. And then they go in Minnie's Tavern. It's like a snowstorm outside, and you're like, oh yeah. And uh, let's see what else. A rare place of refuge and warmth. We want to take you on a journey, hinting at locations, past or recent events. The satisfying part of the world is developing and jamming on a location's unique visual story. All right, that's cool, man. The hazy warmth. Wa oh, here's another one. Like, I wonder how many details that we don't even see, you know, that's here. Looks like they're all stained differently. That face. Um, this is not final. Okay. It says pre-alpha. A warm gritty brown environment and you go in the tavern to another light gritty brown environment oh yes <laughs> i'm just making jokes diablo 4's art is built with modern techniques and utilizes physically based lighting as we handcraft locations across the eastern continent we're mindful of our approach to support combat navigation narrative intent and stylistic direction It's cool to see all this, but like it just, yeah, like we would hope that it would be that way, right? Like a, like a lot of these like types of posts, like we would hope that they would take care of everything, right? So they're just like letting people know we're taking care of everything, every aspect. Additionally, we play to the iconic Diablo game camera, choosing where to add or remove detail to help the readability of gameplay space. Okay. Accentuate visual interest, if as needed. It's a balancing act that results in the handcrafted look with a distinct visual style. Let's see. I read it as expands on lineage. I was like, what? Oh, lineage of Diablo. Got it. Okay, cool. Let's see. <laughs> lineage. Um... The detail definitely doesn't go unnoticed. And when I played it at BlizzCon, like it definitely felt even cooler than it looks. Like you felt like you're running through this dope ass like dungeon or whatever. Okay. This is probably mostly showing off the lighting, how the different uh, light beam shaft thing can have like a different effect on the area. That's cool. Uh, deep in a ruin lost to time, its treasures and mysteries are awaiting discovery. Cool. The world of Sanctuary. Matt McDade. I'm excited to talk about the open world of Diablo 4. We have five captivating zones to explore. Each region is fraught with dangers of their own kind, many routes and hidden corners to uncover. How you choose to make your way through this vast world is up to you. The art and design teams have constructed a contiguous world where you can roam from coast to coast or high up in the glacial ridges. Okay. It's like basically saying there's a diverse landscape. Oh, we get a video chat. You ready? Let's see. No, I don't want to share. I want to get this out of here. Oh, Poggy. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
the little things on the whatever are swaying from the wind, the grass from the wind, the waves, motion in the ocean, chat. Okay. Black and white TV. <laughs> so it's like lost so I can climb up stuff, obviously. Bird did not, that bird did not even flinch, bro. He's like, what's up? You see that bird? I'm sure it's just pre-alpha. <laughs> that bird's like, what's up, beach? What's up? <laughs> <laughs> you want that squawk what they probably have all like enemies oh that statue's cool that statue's pretty cool they probably have all enemies because nothing's uh, reacting to the player that's probably all it is that's cool like it's been there for a while like you know gritty the time you know mother nature is trying to take it back uh it's pretty cool it's pretty cool to see like this is a place we're going to be running around I think this one is called the Taupe Foothills, I think. I'm just joking. Right. Um, was this Slosklin? Slosklin? Coast, the environment art team is set out to tell the story of an untamed wild shorelines and headlands. As you transition toward the shores from the inland, the coastal biome is first evidenced by the longer, more directional grasses. Okay, we saw that. That was cool. That reacts to the driving offshore winds. The beaches are bleak and littered with seaweed, kelp, and rotting carcasses. Rugged cliff tops ascend high, whilst the, uh, what was the what word is that? I don't know if I've ever seen that word in my life. So much for college, dude are carved by a continual pounding of waves below. Through the process of creating our biomes, the environmental art team has set out to communicate that this coastline is rife with peril. Kelp game, dude. The kelp game on fleek. <clears throat> uh, from the main settlements along the coast, it's important to us that they feel woven deep into the fabric of the coastline. Dwellings with deep rooted foundations skirt the cliff tops in a futile attempt to withstand the harsh elements, these structures are compromised of whatever materials by the locals could lay their hands on in various forms of disrepair. It did look kind of jank when we ran by, right? Like, they're telling a story here, right? Like, you could tell, like, this was like a little, like, rinky-dink town. I think there's gonna be a lot of rinky-dink towns. They're barely holding on because it's so destitute, you know? It's so destitute. Everything is so just, you know, Fishing plays a significant part of the day-to-day -day life in these we're of these weary locals. So we saw the fish, yeah. So we've latched onto that idea and placed emphasis on these villages being centered around fishing by adding supporting elements to the rudimentary docks and slipways. Okay. All right. Many of the props here are dynamic. We saw that, a lot of moving parts. The ships are swaying in the ocean waves, the fishmongers' nets hanging to dry in the marketplace. Our main purpose is to breathe life into an awesome architecture of terrain work. And terrain work. Okay. Alpha birds? That's true, did they mention the alpha birds? Because if they don't mention the alpha birds then. Ben Hutchings. As you explore Diablo 4's open world, you'll experience a lot of variation in lighting, weather, and here in Slosklin, Slosklin coast, you'll see a foggy, frigid atmosphere taking cues from highlands and moors. Across the game, we're striving for a grounded and natural palette, allowing us to create a visual space for gameplay that allows, that also achieves a gritty tone. It's definitely gritty, man. Ooh, we get another thing to look at. Ooh. Ooh, another one. Okay, let's see if we can notice things. We'll see if we can notice things before we read about it. Okay, I don't want to go the distance right now. Encanto or whatever the... Don't want to talk about Bruno right now. All right, let's see. Okay, so that exploded. Breakable objects might be the theme of this one. 
Don't talk about Bruno. The stairs are barely, you know, almost taken by the sands, chat. The FPS looks a little like 15, right? Because I'm getting a motion sickness. That damn song, I'm sorry. Okay, is it just me? Is it the verticality? Woo. I'm sitting too close, man. I'm sitting too close. Let me sit back and take a drink. <clears throat> We're reading the blog, so I didn't want to sit in the Lost Ark directory while I was reading the blog, you know. I don't know where to go. I can go in just chatting. I can just go in the sleep the sleep directory. But then I wish I might push down some people that are trying to sleep and get views too. So I don't know. I don't know where to go. Maybe I should just turn off my PC. Hot tub? The hot tub directory? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man, this FP is this is, wow, okay. Easily the hot tub directory. Okay, so I mean this looks cool. Hot tub would be nice. Everything looks great. You know? I'm gonna pause it, man, so I don't get motion sickness. Um, like, it's a lot of brown, brown shades, you know? They're so, like, want people to think the game's badass, right? That, because the Diablo 3 was like, wow, was a little cartoony. So they went, like, so gritty, I feel like. Everything is so brown, right? So like, you guys want a badass game? We'll give you a badass game. Nice, consistent art style. Everything looks great, you know? I'm not complaining, I'm just saying, like, everything is brown, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, they got no color, like, everything, even, like, the green is, like, earth tone. This person's head has just got smashed in that. They just built the steps and just didn't even move the person. They're just like, oh, just, just keep building, Tony. Just keep it going. Yeah, like the green on the armor too, right? Like The leaves are brown. The, yeah, it's just so much. I think they're just like, like here's red or orange, right? And it's so like earth tone. This is like, this is what it was like to live in Arizona, honestly. <laughs> like we were just on a coastal city and it looked dark. This is how your world looks? Smith's, oh man. It looks good though, you know? Again, like, it's like, it's just a, um, observation. Maybe when you play it, you won't feel that way. Um, I can tell you when I play D4, it didn't feel like that in the dungeons, because the dungeons are, like, like, it's all dark. And then the, the fire, the light feels good. But when you're out in the world, like, this is a coastal city, bro. But it, like, it looks similar, right? But it's like, rainy is like uh, Seattle. I don't know. But like, this is uh, coastal. So it's, there's some more greens in here and grays, I guess. But the green doesn't feel green. Also, just like the, I don't know. It probably won't even matter once we're in the game. We won't even notice it. Port is Portland? I, uh, everything just mud. Yeah. Okay, so <clears throat> this is where, where we were. We? So we were here, so let's see what they said about this one. Orbe Monastery is an isolated and secretive feature in the rural dry steppes. Uh, while Zakarum's presence has diminished, the monastery carries evidence that places of worship in for the Zakarum can still quietly function. This location here Okay, what are they trying to say? We want to push the notion of dusty grasslands and sparse vegetation. I mean, we definitely got that. This is Arizona, bro. What was cool though was that red stuff was pretty cool, but it's like the only color. Let's see. Like over the wall here? Like this, like that kind of stuff? Like, I thought that was cool. Like this in the bottom right. 
All right. We've made a conscious decision to add dark rocks that complement the pale, blonde, rusty grasses. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This contributes to greater depth as elements in the foreground move quicker than those further in the back of the scene. To help provide extra visual interest in the region, the environmental art team created a salt flats biome, being able to have blue alkaline lakes skirted with salt encrusted. Really? Are you gonna show us? No? Damn, that would have been nice to see the, cause then we're like, oh, there's more to it. Okay. Uh, okay, I'm gonna skip ahead. This one wasn't as good as the other one, but it was still dope. I mean, it's still like gritty. Yeah, it's just a lot of, you can see it has fallen on hard times. Much of the storage and keepsakes in the Zaka room have been laid to waste. You can pick through the ruins of the abandoned monastery. Perhaps there are still some treasures to find. You know what's wrong with it? Ain't got no gas in it. So here's another zone. Kyovasad? Kyovasad? I can't pronounce these at all, so sorry about that. Let's see what the video has to show us. Okay. Okay, so far, I love this already. This is Blood's kind of zone. I love the Act 5 and D3. You know, um, in Lost Ark, I love that dark green, like a Stella zone, um, drum beat. Already, I'm about this. Let's go. At least there's like some dynamic, like that fire too is cool. I love the deep green, like the forest green or whatever. Mm hmm. Pretty good. Some puddles. What else are we noticing? The flickery flame at night. Soft realistic shadows and dynamic lighting are top notch. This feels super cool to run through. This is my favorite one so far. But I think cause the fire makes it dynamic, you know, like the lighting. Just like I was saying like 10 minutes ago with the caves, right? When you're in the, in the dungeons, like the light really kind of brings it to life. <clears throat> I don't, I, they made their own custom engines usually at Blizzard. I want to watch it one more time. Yeah, they usually do their own custom stuff, so. I don't, I don't know, maybe chat knows. Uh, at BlizzCon they said it was all made from ground up. Yeah, look at that. That thing swaying right there with the shadows. That's kind of cool. Swanging. Oh, this is night. So they're maybe they're going to show us like a day cycle or something. Our goal with Kayo is to drive home the idea. Sorry, there's a plane overhead. That this medieval settlement feels oppressive. Frigid and harsh. However, we still need to convey that this is a place of refuge afforded to those who reside within its boundaries. Like at nighttime, more monsters come out. Like creepers? Oh man, that'd be so good. Skeletons? That'd be a good idea, yeah. This minimalistic settlement, <laughs> this is a minimalistic settlement, so it's important that we give it a heavily defended presence straight off the bat. Yeah, like the drawbridge felt defended. Whenever you cross a drawbridge and then go behind castle walls, it does feel like. Uh, we believe it appropriate to provide a gradual buildup of smaller defense structures upon approach to the settlement. Doing this hints to you that something greater lies ahead. Upon reaching the gates, yeah, we just said that. You are confronted with steep stone, perimeter walls, and deep cavernous moat that wards off any unwelcoming visitors. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I did feel like that. They did a good job with that. Uh, 
making use of the wood from many forests in the region. Dang, they even thought about that. Yeah, like the trees and everything would be... That's kind of cool. I like that. You know, like um, whatever the, the zone is, like that type of wood is used within the crafting, right? That makes sense. Structures here are clad with natural pine boards and birch shingles. As with most dwellings in Sanctuary, these buildings are very much function over form. Like they're just trying to survive, so a lot of things aren't so pretty, right? In the video, we can see a large portion of the southern end, which contains the simplest of shelters, some clinging to town walls overlooking the glacial flow beneath. When you happen upon this area, we want to draw similarities with slum type encampments <laughs> where densely packed living quarters are in abundance. The team has done a fantastic job of really driving. It's funny when you self like, you know, like I just made a fantastic YouTube video. Uh, driving home that narrative with their culture pass. The culture pass, how much is it? $9.99? A little self pat on the back, yeah. Kayo has many districts, with each one set dressed in unique culture kits. Okay, so maybe it's like a bigger town, so then there's like different groups of people. Uh, here we have the slums, where the downtrodden seek shelter from the extreme elements. We support this idea by layering details of frayed cloth, broken shelters, and general unhappiness. Can you believe this is an example of high-end living in Sanctuary? Sanctuary's been messed up, dude. We better go save it. They've been going through some stuff over the years. Positive reinforcement? Yeah. Um, for this nighttime look, we can see the use of fog, soft shadows, bounce, and bounce lightning, lighting to create a softness to the lighting. This softness is a core part of Diablo 4's lighting aesthetic, providing a natural and grounded frame. They mentioned that it's nighttime <clears throat> twice, so I'm hoping they show the daytime version. We want to give Kayo a thick and lived in atmosphere with warm and earthy tones. Oh, yeah, earthy. Yeah. Yeah. It's every day's Earth Day. Okay. <clears throat> Sanctuary needs a stimulus check. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's see. Um. Dungeons of Sanctuary. So they didn't show us the daytime. It's unfortunate. They mentioned the nighttime. They didn't show us the daytime. They mentioned the Arizona desert and the oasis, but they didn't show us the oasis. So maybe at the bottom there's pictures. I haven't looked on them. Uh, dungeons are still that randomized content that you know and love from previous Diablo titles. However, we added a new exciting feature that allow us to make even more dungeons across the world of Sanctuary than ever before. In order to support, this is like content now. In order to support over 150 plus dungeons, we've had to shift the way we make environment art so that it's flexible enough to be used in multiple locations. Somebody said that earlier in chat, that everything kind of flows together. It looks like one cohesive world. And this is why probably too, so they can make randomized dungeons look natural maybe. Again, I'm not reading ahead, I'm just assuming. <clears throat> and not just a single dungeon. We break it down. Wait, we break it all down into what we call tile sets. Yeah, tile sets are in D3 also. We would like to share with you a handful of tile sets and a few ways we can mix and match them with props, interactives, and lighting to create dungeons that are varied, handcrafted, and yet procedurally created. So you can take like different, all the different cities that we've seen today and make one dungeon out of it. It takes a lot of hard work from many teams to make a dungeon, and we're proud to show you what we have been working on. Oh, shit. You ready? This is where we're going to spend our time, boys. I I hope that it doesn't look like it at all. I hope that they would have took the three things that they showed us and then, you know, like that, whatever. That kind of a narrative would make sense, but let's go. Either way, this looks cool. This this kind of has a POE vibe, right, with the with the dark red. The evil. Another plane. 
I mean, this looks diabolical. I love it. Especially if it's like a high-level dungeon or whatever. But this is the procedural one, so this is just gonna be a random rift. They just mentioned the like procedural generated content. It's sure dark. See, it's. It, I'm not trying to complain, right? But it's hard to know because we've never seen this, right? So we don't know, like, oh, that is from that one zone and that's from that other zone, right? It's hard to know. It just looks like a dungeon from the ground up. The lighting's good. Everything's on point, right? The lighting, the freaking visuals. Everything looks good. It's just hard to know what we're actually wit witnessing, or for me anyway. It's hard to see what might be taken from something else. Good point. Uh, this tile set is an example of how we have returned to darkness. We want to take you deep. Oh, I lost my cursor. We want to take you deep, chat, underground, to the darkest recesses of Sanctuary, where a mysterious and gross corruption has taken root. This ancient temple is a great place to push some primal horror vibes. It definitely looked cool. The fixed camera is one of our best tools since it allows us to place assets in the foreground without blocking the playable space. Mm, mm hmm. Yeah, like you can have like, you can be playing like in Super Smash Brothers, right? As an example, you can be playing here, and then the background could be like a goddamn universe. You know, it could be anything you want, essentially. Because we always know where you are looking, we can dial in and customize these layouts, vistas, and foreground elements to make sure there is a good composition. Uh, the spider. Legs are placed in specific locations for their unnerving silhouettes twitching in the background. Yeah, that did look cool. I noticed that. You guys see those? There was a lot of them. Great layouts, depth of space. You have the impression that this goes on forever. Okay. The props and interactives team seek to maintain the mystique and horror settings. Uh, nothing here should feel like it was crafted in sanctuary by people living on the surface. I like this kind of these kind of lines. I think I like a lot like when they said the uh, You know, whatever environment the people build out of that material and then similar to like demons would craft their own thing underground. Yeah uh, We were able to focus on different styles of shape language monolithic and twisted This is not a place you would want to explore alone. All right, we're gonna get Smith Curie on it. Here we can really see our embrace of Diablo 4's core pillar of a return to darkness. Our aim is to subtly lead you through the dungeon whilst revealing fantastically grotesque forms. Okay, so here's another one. I'm excited to see what these are. Wretched caves. We're right back. Damn you! I'm not signed in on this second PC here. There's a druid, boys. Again, the lighting sells me big time because the lighting looks so good. Perry Rogue. Man, I love Lost Ark so much, man. But this art style is like, it's nice to have both. You know, the art style is too good. My loot. Oh my God. Has there been music this whole time? I'm like, it's weird that there's no sound. Oh my god, hold on one second, time out. Pro streamer, by the way. God damn it. How much sound have we missed? <laughs> Reruns? Run it back.
What's up, Cursed? We're just going through the new Diablo 4 blog for March. I wonder if they have like the sound of like the ocean in that other town. I might just like listen to a few of them real quick. Just like a 10 second clips. Or maybe at the end we go through. Or at the end we go through. And then play the normal music. Uh, the world of Diablo is incredibly large, utilizing numerous unique tile sets to cover the various zones, biomes, and cultures. In order to create so much high quality content, another self humble break, we found clever ways to reuse tile sets and add enough variety to cover 150 dungeons. All while providing fresh experiences each time. One way we can do that is by dressing up tile sets in various themes. The next dungeon is a hidden druid resting site overrun with demons. Okay. As you travel through the dungeon, you'll see that it's covered with many druidic uh, culture items such as talismans and charms. We place a lot of these items on a layer that can be turned on or off depending on what theme the dungeon is. All right. Okay. <clears throat> We're able to expand on the druid culture kit in this dungeon. In many ways, the druid is an exciting return to the Diablo franchise, no less for props and interactives expanding on its unique class by providing a full kit for its reclusive uh, people. <clears throat> Recluse. All right, flooded depths. You ready? I gotta pause this music and play this one. Stop it! Stop it! <laughs> We got my Sork here, maybe. What the f- Why, Blizz? Ooh, that was a good door sound. That was a good door sound. That's the good sounds in this one, this video. What? How did that work? Wait, <laughs> is that some mage shit or what? What is that? Okay, some kind of system. She just forced open the door. She's like, you will open. Oh shit! American Sanctuary Warrior. Use the force. This video is ASMR, huh? With this, the water now too. Random statue head. <clears throat> this one's good too, man. This one might be my favorite now. You know? Alright, I'm gonna go back and listen to him later. That was pretty good, dude. Uh, the new dungeon features uh, seamless floor transitions and traversals are exciting. The traversals like the freaking gladiator thing, right? <clears throat> but my favorite new feature is what we call tile set transition scenes. These scenes allow us to connect two different tile sets together in the same dungeon and manage and running through a crypt only to find a hole in the wall that leads you into a deeper, vast underground cave network. All while keeping randomized layouts that change with each dungeon run. In this final video, we show two tile sets joined together by a tile set transition scene. The first floor is ruined. This, this, this is, let me see. Maybe it was so seamless, I didn't even realize, dude. So this is like one tile set, and then when she, and then they're showing right now, that's the next one, right? And then they transfer over. 
And now it's not bronze, now it's green. Boom. Next level shit, dude. There it is. Okay. Um... Seamless. It was pretty seamless. I love this dungeon. It was one of our first where we dialed the style for props and interactives in D4. On the surface we have gothic medieval style. Fans love. Pikes. Armor. Chandeliers. I hope this set reminds you what Diablo 4 means to many of us. Part of that vision. Is this the next next one? Alright, let's just watch it. We get what they're trying to convey to the audience. Is that it's like Diablo riffs, but way, way, way more in depth. And like, everything's gonna be more seamless. Um, the world's gonna make more sense. It's gonna look like a survival game, almost like how, how it would be in real life, you know? Every, you know, everything kind of like a fishing village is a fishing village. You know, everything's gonna look as realistic as possible, or whatever word that they try to use besides realistic. I forgot what that word was. Environmental art, let's go. Was this coming out? Nobody knows. Maybe maybe alpha this year for like absolutely lucky. Or I'll just guess. It's just speculation though, we don't know. Everything's natural is a good word. It's gonna look natural, yeah. Twenty twenty five. That's a pretty good shot right there. That that would sell people. I feel like that kind of adventure, and then caves are like wonder. Yeah. That looks good too. That reminds me of Conan Exiles. There's a lot of FPS drops, yeah. Like even during that scene. Oh, that looks cool. This I like a lot, like that kind of, I like the more contrasting colors, like, you know. All the fog is hard to like, get into. There's a lot of, there's a lot of fog in these. Looking like uh, King Theoden's eyes and shit, you know? You were like... <laughs> all glossed over and shit. But, like, when it's really vibrant, like, contrasting, I like it. You have no power here. I said they need to dial the fog down a little bit. You know, his eyes are all, like, grayed out, you know what I'm saying? I think they need to dial down the fog a little bit, honestly. This definitely is like some World of Warcraft's flat zone, right? Like the salt flats or something like that. But it looks cool. I like that it's red. Um, the highlights of this video, besides obviously all the dungeons look good, is that one scene I really like a lot. Like that look, this looks cool too. I don't know why spacebar doesn't work. So it's like this. Like it's so foggy, man. Yo, dial it back. There's fog everywhere, and this is the same zone, right? But this looks cool. What's up, Nick? That looks cool. I'm gonna reload my um, Elgato just in case there's any more video. It's gonna give us more. Crisper, crisper sound. There you go. It could, maybe it's a fog village, blood. Did you ever think about that? L little lamb or dog? So this shot really makes me like, oh wow, this is cool. Cause this is like, um, you know, 
I don't know. This is like uh, every like a lot of people like this kind of stuff. It's like a lot of like adventure. Like you don't know like the whole there's a whole world to explore. And you don't know what's going to happen. This shot does it for me, I think. Out of the whole the whole blog. For some reason, I think it looks really really cool. You were playing some D3 last night and then like the caves and then like these little speckles like that's really dope looking. And the sand, like sands through the hourglass. It's a cool video. Not bad. Not bad at all, chat. Let's keep, uh, see if there's anything else. Nope. That was a quick overview of how we approach the environment art in Diablo 4. We love creating the stage for all the action while still delivering subtle visual cues that make Diablo games so iconic. Lastly, it's not too often that we get to share and appreciate the incredible work of our teammates and the progress of Diablo 4. Glad you stopped by and I hope you're excited. I, they did a good job. I normally, I normally like troll these kind of posts, but I don't know. I enjoyed it. Normally if there's no like gameplay or systems, I try trolling, but. I had a good time. I want to listen to the audio. Yeah, not bad for an. I mean, as yeah, I not bad for an art art post really. I'm gonna mute the Diablo two soundtrack here, and then I'm gonna play the sounds from the videos that we missed. Like I'm curious to see what it sounds like. It's gonna sound like mud. Okay. Oh, we didn't miss much from the first video. <laughs> yeah, okay. Next one. The monastery. Rain is supported. You'll build a new PC for D4. Bro, how are they going to have sound on some of them, but not all of them? <laughs> we I just didn't even miss anything. Okay, so here's the last one that we missed, I think. How weird, huh? The one time I remembered about sound was the only clip that had sound in it. That's crazy. So this this was my other favorite town. Yeah, this one I like a lot. Okay, well. Good blog post overall. I'm excited to see more things. Oh, maybe this one has sound. This is the one we didn't... I hear the tentacles are... There we go. Oh, uh, that are spider legs, right? I think. Or something like that, they said. Man, this sounds just nostalgia, huh? Like, they really know how to hit. Like, the sound really brings it together. Cool. It really brings it to life a lot. 